Map visuals can be great for your Power BI reports when you need spatial context, meaning how are things located from one another. Now, one functionality that I have to integrate in many of my Power BI reports is the ability to pick a location, set a certain distance, and then see only those other locations that fall within that distance. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up. The example that we're going to build is going to visualize different store locations on a map where the user can choose a city. That chosen location gets nicely highlighted on the map and the user can say what other locations should be visible based on the distance to the chosen location using a slider. Now let's put this one to 250 kilometers and then we only have those locations visible that fall within that radius. All right, now let's set this up step by step. Now, of course, let's start with a map. This can be the normal Power BI standard map, can also be an Azure map, whatever you prefer. Now on this map, we're going to visualize the store locations. So here you see I have a table with all of the descriptive information about the stores, including latitude and longitude. So let's drag latitude onto the latitude drop zone, and let's do the same for longitude. Now, just to make sure that you can see all of the locations nice and clear, let's go here to formatting, then map settings, and then here I'm gonna go for grayscale. Then the bubbles, we can make a little bit bigger. Let's for now put it to 10. So now we have all of the store locations nicely visualized on a map. Now, the next step is to also show where's the chosen city. Now, the thing is though, the store locations come from our stores table. The city comes from our cities table. Now let me show you in the model. Here you see we have stores, here we have cities, and there's no connection between the two. And that's going to be important for later. So the bubbles that you see in our map visual, they correspond to the latitude and longitude for each individual store, which has one row in this table. Now, how can we now add another point for the selected city? The selected city, which comes from a different table, cities. Now to be able to do that, what we can do is add a dummy location to this table or create a dummy table where we have the same stores, latitude and longitude with one extra row that we connect to this one. Now, let me show you what I mean. So first of all, let's go here to the top, click on new table and let's call this one stores dummy, which is going to be equal to, and here we can use a function that's called select columns. We want to select the columns from the stores table and then we can just list the columns that we want. So we're going to have shop name, and then this is going to be the shop name column. And then we also include the latitude and longitude. So there you go. And you see that gives me these three columns, shop name, latitude and longitude. I just should get rid of that typo over there. And now we're going to add an extra row that serves as a placeholder for the selected city location. Now to do that, let's go over here to the top. Let's make use of a union function, which appends two tables. So combines them. And that second table is going to have our dummy placeholder. And to add a table, we can just use curly brackets, then a round bracket open, and then we can just type in selected location. All right, this is going to be the name that we have to use to refer to this dummy row later. And then we can just leave two empty values for the other columns. Okay, let's close the brackets just like this, and let's close the union function. All right, now if I scroll all the way down, you see we have now there selected location, perfect. Okay, now let's go to the modeling view. Here we need to take that stores dummy table and connect it to the stores table. So here we have shop name, there we have shop name, drag and drop. I want to have one to many cross filter direction single and save. All right, so now that this is in place, we can go to the report view. And then on a map, we are going to build it a little bit differently. We can go here to the build panel. And here we're going to make changes to how we determine the location for each field. Instead of taking latitude and longitude from our stores table, we're going to have measures. So I'm going to add a new measure and let's call this one latitude average is going to be equal to if, and then here I want to check if the selected value of the shop name in the dummy table is equal to selected value. 
or selected location. And if it is, then I want to have the, well, latitude from the cities table. So I can say selected value again, and then give me the latitude from the cities table. Now, if it's not, then I want to have the selected value from the stores dummy table. All right, and then you can close the F function. Now, of course, we need to repeat this measure then also for the longitude. And once you have these measures, you can just add them on the corresponding drop zones for the map visual. Now, it will still give you an error, but we can resolve this by going here to our dummies table and then take the shop name and drag it onto location. Now, whether or not it worked is a bit difficult to see. So let's also apply some conditional formatting so that we show the selected city in red. All right, so let's add another measure. Now here you see I named the measure CF location for conditional formatting. And if the shop name in the dummy table is equal to selected location, then I want to return the color red, otherwise blank. Okay, now this measure we can use for the color of the bubbles. So let's go to formatting, then over here choose bubbles, colors, and then click on the FX button and switch to field value where we have in our matrix table CF location. Now if you want, you can do the same thing for the size of the bubble. So let's add another measure. And here you can use exactly the same logic, but instead of returning a color, you return a value that determines the size of the bubbles. All right, now that one, you can just drag onto bubble size. Now once you have added it to bubble size, let's then also go to format, then bubbles, and here you can play around with the scaling of the bubbles. All right, perfect. So now we can clearly see the store locations as well as the chosen city. Now let's just switch cities so that you can see what happens. All right, perfect. So you see the red dot, the chosen city moving over the map. All right, now I'm living close to Dusseldorf. So that's the city I'm going to select. So now the real interesting part, how can we set up a filter that's based on the distances of all of the locations to the chosen city. Now for that, we need to be able to calculate the distance. So let's start with that measure and that measure needs to be based on, well, a distance that the user can choose. Now, how can we have that? With a numeric parameter. So let's add the parameter, then the measure. Short interruption, if you got value from this video so far, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. That's the best way to support this channel where I have hundreds of free Power BI videos for you to watch. Now, if you like learning with me in a more structured way, then check out my trainings over here. Now, thank you, and let's go back to the video. Let's go here to the top, modeling, and then choose new parameter, numeric range. Let's call this parameter PRM max distance. Germany is not that big, so let's set the maximum number of kilometers to a thousand, and then over here, increments of maybe 10 and let's put the default to 250. Okay, add the slicer to the page. Let's click here on create. And that gives us a slicer where we can choose the distance from the chosen city. All right, now I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Just like this and put it over here on that placeholder that I created before. And then under formatting, let's get rid of the background and let's also update the header. And over here, I just wanted to say max distance without the BRM. And let's also make that a little bit smaller as well as the values can be a bit smaller. Then if you want to see the slider, you can either make it a little bit bigger or you can also go here to advanced options, turn responsiveness off. And then if we make it a little bit bigger, you see there we have the scroll bar, not with the dot, but with the vertical line. All right, so now we have a slicer where the user can choose the maximum distance, but nothing happens just yet. Because for us to build the filter, we need to know the maximum distance plus the distance from the chosen city to all of the store locations. Now, and that part we're going to solve with another measure. So let's add one and let me copy over the measure that calculates the distance between two points on a map, which is called the Harrison distance. Now, this measure is based on what I found on this website. Now here it gives you a background of what it does plus the formula to calculate it. Now, this is in JavaScript, not DAX. However, the same logic you can copy over 
to DAX, which is what I did, which resulted in this beautiful formula. Don't try to understand all of the details. That's not really important. You can just copy it over from the sample file. But what is important is over here, what values are we using for the latitude and longitude that we are comparing against? So in our case, that comes from the cities table, right? The city that's selected and the latitude and longitude of the stores and everything that follows. After that, well, that gets calculated automatically once you have picked the latitude and longitude of the two locations that you're comparing. Now, of course, always a good idea to test it to see if the distances it gives are realistic. So let's give this a try. I'm going to take a measure and drag it onto the tooltip. And if I then hover over Berlin, you see it's 550 kilometers away from Dusseldorf, the other side of Germany, which seems to be right. Okay, now that I know that it works, we can set up the filter measure. The filter measure that actually gets rid of the dots that are outside of the chosen max distance. So outside of the radius. Now let's add another measure. And here we can simply compare the distance that the other measure calculates to the chosen max distance by the user. And if it's equal to or below, then return one, otherwise a zero. Okay, now that measure we can use as a visual level filter. So I'm going to select the map, then take the location filter, drag it onto filters on this visual and set it equal to one and click on apply. And you see, it filters out all of the locations that are further away than the chosen max distance, but a red dot for the chosen city is gone. And that is because here for our distance calculation, right? It's still calculating the distance for the selected city. However, I don't want that. So therefore, let's go here after the return statement. And instead of having your distance, we're going to replace that with if the selected value for the shop name is different than selected location, then I want to calculate the distance. Otherwise, I don't want to have this distance calculation. So we have our chosen city nicely visible on the map. Plus, if we now change the max distance, let's say to 350, then all the locations within that chosen radius, within that max distance from the chosen city are visible. All right, so everything is working as it should. Now let's do some last finishing touches. For example, that title there at the top, I don't need. Let's get rid of it. So over here in the formatting, let's turn the title off. And then maybe right next to it, you want to have a table with all of the cities that fall within the filter. So that are within the radius. So over here, we can have a table and maybe here a card that shows how many cities. So let's add from the stores table. I want to have the store name. So over here, and I want to have the distance, which gets calculated by a fancy distance measure. There you go. Now the total distance, that doesn't really matter. So I'm going to turn the totals off and maybe we want to have them sorted in ascending order. And so that this one is then the closest one. Maybe also interesting to see the city here. So the city I take not from cities because that is a disconnected table. It's important that what that one stays disconnected. So I'm going to take it here from my stores table. Perfect. And let's make this table a little bit bigger so that everything fits. Good. Now I just want to have city then right next to shop name and that's it. Okay. Now right above it, I want to have a card. So let's also add then a new card visual. And that one I'm going to place over here in the top right corner. And I want to show the number of stars. Now I don't have a measure for that, but we can just take the shop name. And then instead of the first one, I want to have a count or distant count. Now that gives me 33 because it's not filtered. So I want to use that filter measure also here and here, right? So if I select a max distance, let's say of 100, we only have one, two, three, four stores, but these don't update. And that is because I am not applying the filter to the table. So let's add a filter measure also to the table, which we can do by dragging and dropping it on to the filter section and setting it equal to one. Okay, now if we try to do the same for the card, that probably won't work because over here, we don't have in the filter context the store and that measure needs to be calculated store by store. So instead of doing it like this, which 
doesn't work. We can take the shop ID or shop name, and then we can make use of a top n filter. And that filter forces the evaluation to be roll by roll over the stores, where we say, oh, if we have a one, so the top one, based on the location filter, then we want to keep it. See? And now we have five. Okay, and that's it. Now, of course, also here for the card, we want to update the formatting, right? So for the card, I don't want to have a border and background, and we can turn that off. And then instead of saying here, count of shop name, let's rename it. And so over here, I just want to have number of stores. Good, and now the final test. So I'm going to choose a different city. So let's choose Berlin, then max distance of let's say 400, perfectly, nicely zooms out, just the way I imagine it to work. And that's it. Now, I hope that you like this technique. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to learn more about map visuals, you can check out these two videos. And if you want to build reports together with me from beginning to end and learn all of my tips and tricks, then see over here my upcoming Power BI Design Transformation Program. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next video.